A bit of awkwardness in trying to figure out your strategy. And the title is still weird to me, too, so I'm just going to mention that. <laughs> this game will draw some comparison to Cascadia. Yes. What? Spectacular. A gamerized Cascadia is... I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Chris Yee. And today we have a review for Spectacular. This is a Chili Fox game, and um, it's basically a drafting game with hexes, and you're placing stuff out on a board, so. Critters. Oh, Cr- oh that's right. <clears throat> They're not just dice. They are critters. Yeah. Is this a zoo we're making? Like... No, you're 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 taking care of animals that might go extinct, I think is what it is. Is that why yes. it's spectacular? You're protecting them, yeah, so you're like, you're trying not to cook them. You're supposed to protect them. All right, well, Z is going to show you how to not cook animals. Don't cook them. In the game, each player is going to have one of these boards representing uh, the area that they are building up. That comes with a little animal, so you're going to get all the tokens that have your little critter. So say another player might have the zebras here, for instance, and they are going to be rolling dice, placing them here, two of each color. And then you shuffle up your tiles, you put three here face up, and then you also flip the next three and put them here. The first one there, the second, the third, okay? Uh, You can have one time to re-roll and to switch out two of these tiles, and then you're good to go. You've also got these tokens here that let you mitigate your dice. Everybody gets one of these boards, and we're going to be drafting in this game. So you are going to take one, you'll put it up here, and you'll see the artwork matches there. And then we populate that board with one of each of these tiles from the general supply and one of each of the dice, okay? So let me go ahead and do that now. With that done, and I'll remind you, every player has one of these boards that they are doing that with, then you are ready to begin. The game is played over two big halves. Uh, The first half is going to be over when these boards that are traveling around, we're passing them around the table, when they're empty, and every turn you take one thing, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight rounds. After eight rounds, we are going to score. Are we going to score specifically... Uh, The top line here on the score pad, which has to do with this sort of ticket office at the entrance of your park. Uh, After that's done, we're going to replenish these boards, and we will play again, and we play seven more rounds at at the end of that first half. And then we are done, and we score up, well, everything else on this row, okay? Uh, So, in the game, on your turn, you are going to take one thing from here, and one thing from your own supply. So, this is all simultaneous, by the way. So, while I'm picking, the other players are picking as well. Let's say I want to take, uh, I'm going to take this token, so this tile, and I'll put it right here. And then from here, I can take a tile, or I can take a die, just like from up there. Uh, and I'm going to take, from here, I'll take, um, let's go with, oh, I don't know, I'll take this die. Why not? Okay? Once we've undone, then we are going to place these things. I have to place it, you know, anywhere in here I want to. But I am trying to have groups of colors. And I am trying to build these little triplets, because that's going to give me a tower. And that's one of the things that I will score for, Okay. Uh, And then this die has to go on a matching tile, so perhaps I put it there, like so. Uh, This is going to move along to the next player after we've placed, and I get a new one that comes into play to me with one thing missing, of course. From that one, I'll again, we will take one thing from here, one thing from here. This continues until those boards run out. And then we go to the first scoring. So let me just go ahead and pretend that I've placed out a few things. This one here is my own special animal. Hence the star, and it can only take a six. Let's say I did that already, and let's say I placed one there. Um, I put out some, you know, some tiles, perhaps. Uh, Let's say this, you know, ended up right here, and then I would have, you know, replenished. You do replenish these, not your own dice, but you do replenish your own tiles until they run out. Uh, And then, that's it. Let's say it's, you know, let's say it's the end of the first half, and we are ready to score. The tickets is very, very simple, the scoring for that. You are going to check here where your tickets uh, office is, 
every die next to it and every die next to those dice, you're going to score the pips for that. So for me, it would be six points. This one's touching that as well. So that's another four for a total of 10 points. I cannot score this one because there's nothing in between. And even if there was a tile in between, but it wasn't filled with a die, I still don't score it. It's just six and four for 10 victory points. Everybody writes down their score and we go on to the second half of the game. During the second half of the game, we are also again replenishing these, but at that point we're also putting dice in here on the inside, all right? Uh, and then new tiles here as well from the supply. We continue, uh, they won't run out, but these things will run out. Uh, and once that's done, then the game is over and we are going to score everything else. So let's take a look here at everything else we are scoring. The four different land types that you are seeing represented here, we're going to score them. Each one is going to score based on the pips in there, but you need to have these breeding tiles be part of that group. If they are not part of that group, then that will not score. And so here's what I mean by that. You'll see that these tiles can only have a one or a two has to be a one or a two. So perhaps earlier in the game I chose to put this out and I chose to spend this worker flipping it over to modify this die down to a two. That's what the workers do, by the way. Uh, all of these, including one wild one, you can use towards any color. And the ones and the sixes do wrap around, by the way. So I can put a two, I can modify this to a two, and let's say I put that there earlier in the game. I'm going to be scoring this area here. I'm going to figure out the total number of pips and I'm going to multiply that by the number of hearts that are in this area, as long as they have a die, okay? Uh, and so in this case, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 times one heart for 12 victory points. And so I would write that down here in the blue row. If there was another heart tile and it had a die on it, then it's times one times two, okay? I do that for all four. I'm going to also score these pillars. The pillars end up in areas. I'll find uh, a tile that can go there. Let me let me look through these and find one. So for example, when I do that, and during the game, if I had done this, I put a pillar there. The pillar lets me do two things. I can do some extra scoring, which I'll explain in one second, but it also lets me put sixes next to pillars. That's the only way you can put out sixes, actually. Uh, otherwise, you cannot, only on your special animal right here, the one that represents you. So I could have done this, and uh, let's say I also had a blue die, it ended up right here, like that. So the pillar scoring uh, entails that you have the three spaces around the pillar filled, and if so, you score the pips for those things. So I would get 13 points because of this one. If even one of these is missing, however, then the score for this is nothing at all. So you need to be careful for that one, make sure that they are filled uh, all the way around. And then lastly, you're gonna be scoring animals, different animals, and that shows you down here. Uh, you want to have different kinds, so you begin with one that will never show up again, that's your own, like the zebra for our friend over here that I showed you earlier. They have a zebra there that's not part of the mix, it's their own. Uh, and then you're going to be scoring everything. A lion, this uh, uh, giraffe, uh, the fox there, the arctic fox. You count up how many different things you've got. Let's say I have 12 different animals. I'm going to be getting 21 points for that. Uh, the last row here is for special scoring. If you choose to play in advanced mode, you also get a tile here that entail some extra scoring. One here, one here, one here. You might get some points for that. And then of course you sum that up and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. You have a breakdown right here of the tiles that you begin with so that you know which ones have hearts, which ones are these multipliers, and which ones give you pieces of towers so that you can better plan to put these towers out. They come in three colors, these white ones, and then the brown and the dark ones here. So there you go, that is what you are doing, trying to build up groups, trying to have multipliers so those pips aren't going to waste, and hopefully putting out some towers so you can score them as well, plus have a bunch of different animals. Uh, like I said, at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner, and that is 
spectacular. All right, so this is an open drafting game where everything is laid in front of you. You can kind of look ahead. How do you guys feel about that? It's it's interesting because you always have like kind of a steady side thing, and then there's the part that passes around. And it's funny because what it reminds me of is with the tile everything's laid out on is, uh, have you ever played the Sushi Roll, the no. Sushi Go Dice game? No, no, I haven't. I, it's I, like that? Yeah, it's like, it, it is like, it's like, this is like that. I'm sorry. Um, it is where you have the little cardboard thing that you pass around. But this one does the, it's kind of like a two layer of tiles, right? Because right, there's the right. tile tiles and the dice that go on top of it. So I, I like that interesting dynamic where you're pulling two things. They can both be tiles. They can both be dice, mix and match. They don't have to go in the same area at the same time. Right. I do like the idea that your pool of stuff is finite. It's mm-hmm. like you'll have your nine, what is it, seven plus eight, right? So 15 things mm-hmm. that you'll take. And you know what you're getting, pretty except for the tiles. You have to like kind of wait and see the tiles. You see three, and you you keep getting the rest. But I like that your dice roll. You roll them one time, you get that re-roll, and that's what you have for the whole game. You know what you've got. Like you're saying, you can bank on your stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's the other stuff that's in flux. You have to wait a little bit, you know, for. Well, I'll, I'll hold on and see if I get a better animal or like a multiplier or whatever, a pillar one. Um, I like the drafting. I think the drafting's clever in this. I was worried it was going to be fiddly, too, passing those boards, but it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they slide just fine. It's interesting because there's so much looking ahead you could do, mm-hmm. and I could see that bogging certain people down. I could yeah. see them looking at the beginning and saying, okay, I know the whole first half of the game, what is available, and there there's the interaction and that waiting of seeing what other people are going to take. Right, right, right. But ultimately, like... Someone could take too much time planning ahead. So I think you just have to be aware. Yeah. You have to be aware. Yeah, one of my negatives, which I was just talking to you about a little bit ago, is mm-hmm. I do – it is unfortunate that you – that it's, it's all simultaneous and you could look, even without meaning to, because you know, you'd have to you know put blinders on. But you could see what somebody else just took before they're passing you that. And in your head you go, oh, they didn't take the five blue. I could take the five blue. I shouldn't know that before I draft. Yeah. Yeah, but that also... feels kind of it feels bad. You know what I mean? I I, I don't know. I don't know. They, I, maybe players should have screens. I don't know how to fix that. But but then you also need to be able to look ahead because I think that's a big part of the game. You do, but it, so it's like, how do you? If, if they took something before it? you took it, it feels like if you if that informs your decision at all, it's gonna feel a little slimy. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, it, yeah, I agree. It feels icky. I agree, right? Yeah. And I did it on accident. We we were playing a two player game of this, and I was like, "What did I just hand Wendy?" I think there's a blue four that I'm kind of banking on, and I looked over. I saw her take a tile. I'm like, well, I'm gonna do my part to not like pretend I didn't see that. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and make the decision I would have made, but hoping the blue four comes back. Right? Correct. If she had taken it though. It feels weird to be like, well, I know it's not coming back, but I should pretend it might come back and make my decision based on that. It, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a weird thing. It keeps the game flowing. So I'm not saying it should be, you know, around the table. That would be too long. It just feels kind of um, like you might, uh, you know, you might cheat without meaning to. And and for me, that's that's it's a small sticking point. It yeah. doesn't really, you know, uh, it, it doesn't really throw off the groove of the game. I think that this is an incredibly quick game. Yeah. Surprisingly quick. I think you can play it easily in a half hour, yep. maybe shorter, and that's regardless of player count. So if that happens once or twice, it feels just like a little bit icky, but then also I can move on. The rest of the game just kind of keeps moving. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Now this does something that I really enjoy in a lot of games where you have a lot of things you're working towards and you can't maximize it all. So you've got your your small numbered animals, I guess what you call it, like the heart animals that are trying yeah, to yeah, create the, the set multipliers. They're breeding, you have I guess. The I goals. don't know. Yeah. Um, you have the pillars that you're trying to do. There's like three different ways to score throughout the game. So there's a lot going on that I enjoy with that, like very much trying to figure out how to play stuff properly on your board. Mm-hmm. I, I just generally, when these kind of games come out, I think I'm going to like this, you know? Yeah. It, and it, it, it fits that for me. And it's funny because learning it the first time, learning that, okay, there's three different ways of scoring. One happens halfway through the other. You know what I mean? Like the the kind of separation of them, it sounded so fiddly. And like I was going to – it sounded like I was going to struggle with the just mathing it out. Mm-hmm. 
And then you realize, oh, the first scoring is extremely easy. Mm-hmm. And then the other two are also easy. But it's just – it's like an awkward teach, I think, is the – you know, it's an awkward teach. It's an awkward learn. There's also – Go ahead. Go okay, ahead. I was going to say, there's also a little bit of awkwardness in trying to figure out your strategy because mm-hmm. the stuff that scores at the beginning isn't necessarily the stuff that scores in the end. doesn't even matter yeah. at the end, right? Like when yeah. you score the tickets, you never have to think about that again, which is kind of weird. I don't know. I find the scoring in this to be, I don't know if obvious is the right word, but a little sort of like this is the first thing they thought of and they were like, yeah, that's good. That's good enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The animals variety thing. I'm like... I don't think I thought of it once. You know, it's it, it happens because there's 17 different kinds. You see what I'm saying? So it's just you get there. I, I don't know. It's one of those things that I thought was a little lame. That scoring's kind of boring. That scoring's kind of lame. Um, the ticket thing just feels weird. They're, they're like, oh, halfway through, yeah, score the dice near this one tile. The multipliers are interesting. You want the big group. You want the multiplier. Okay, sure, I get that. You want the high pips. I don't know. The scoring is fine, but it also feels a little limp. I enjoy it, but I tend to enjoy kind of like semi-competing goals to work towards. Sure. And you, well, then also you can step it up and play with the three scoring objectives on yeah. the side. Yeah, yeah. And I think that makes it more like a gamer kind makes of. Makes it feel more thing. dynamic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. going to force me to lay out tiles differently, or I'm going to search for four of the same value dice to stick next to each other. Stuff I wouldn't do without. It starts to get yeah. weird at that point, and that there is some interest there. Yeah, I do. I do feel like I've I've played a game where I really focus on the animals uh-huh. and having that diversity, and it does take work because you can't. Yeah. You can't have all the other tiles that you want right. if you want to focus on the animal diversity. And what's weird is that your particular stack of tiles that you come out with has duplicates in it. So you're going to have duplicates on your board. You can't have a completely diverse board. Um, yeah. So it's it's interesting. But the, but the score ramps up so much where you're getting 10 points for every new animal. It can make a big difference. Yeah. If you're focused on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think the time investment in this one, though, is a good return for what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I do like that it is so quick. That the turns are very fast. You you pick your tie, your die, whatever you're doing, boom. You, you blink and it's first scoring. You reload those boards. Bam, you blink again and it's the second scoring and there's your game. You know, it is fast. So it's a good return on that investment. 20 to 30 minutes is what it says, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I just wish that it was a little, the scoring was a little more punchy maybe. And the title is still weird to me too. So I'm just going to mention that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the yeah. title is strange. What? Yes. Spectacular. I, I think this game will draw some comparison to Cascadia, right? Because it's both a tile-laying hex game, and then on top of the tiles, you place another thing that you Yeah, that's drag. interesting, yeah. And I think that f- on that o- outset, people will be like, looks like Dice Cascadia. And I, I can't exactly disagree with that, uh, but I feel like this scoring in Cascadia is a little bit more natural to teach. But as like, a, this almost feels a little bit more like a gamerized Cascadia, especially mm-hmm. when you throw in those side objectives. And I do enjoy that a lot. I, I, yeah. I enjoy what's going on. Uh, but it's just, it's funny. We're sounding fairly negative on it. I enjoy the game. I, no, I, I like, like it too. Yeah. Yeah. too. Yeah. I like it too. I just think it's a little, I think maybe the, the comparison to Cascadia il- illustrates a point I'm struggling to make, which is this game feels a little awkward. Cascadia is a very smooth game. Yes. Mm. Cascade is one of those games that feels natural. After you've played once, you feel like you've played before. It has a natural feel. It's it's It flows. It's got good flow. Mm-hmm. This game has a little bit of a kind of weird flow. It's a little scratchy along the way. Um, that doesn't make necessarily for a bad game. It just makes for one that's a little esoteric. It's a little strange. And yeah. these designers have done that kind of thing in the past, to be fair. This company has. We reviewed Footprints. I think Footprints has this really funky kind of cadence to it. Yeah. It's a little weird along the way. It doesn't make it Mm -hmm. bad. It just makes it a little strange, less than natural. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a score for it? I do have a score for it. Um, I like it. Like I said, I'm going to come in at a seven. I don't adore it. I don't think it's going to be my new favorite tile laying or drafting game, but I enjoy it. I think it's it's a really... Good return on a time investment. I think it's one that people should try out. Maybe those clutchy kind of feelings won't bother you. Um, 
but I think it's a neat one. It's a well put together package, if a little rough around the edges. I do wish a little more sort of polish had gone into it. The score might be a little higher in that case for me, but still commendable. So I'm giving it a seven. Okay, I'm going to give this a 7.5. Um, thematically, it does very little for me, but the yeah. actual gameplay, the tile lane, the okay. drafting, I very much enjoy mm. that. I mean, look at that armored hip, yellow. Hippopotamuses, baby. They're wonderful. Um, yeah, but not just. Not in real life. Just, <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> no, not. No, they're actually like really <laughs> terrifying, right? They bite you. Yeah. Um, but I do enjoy the tile lane. I enjoy the drafting. I think it's an interesting combination to have the dice and the tiles. <clears throat> Because you can draft too many dice or you can draft too many tiles. And the goal, obviously, is to have equal amounts of both so that every tile can be scored right. with a die. Um, and so it's just very interesting, uh, the planning ahead. I feel like usually in a drafting game, I have a hand of cards and I kind of remember what was in the other hands, but I don't have that perfect knowledge. And I very easily forget what there is. And so being able to look at everything is just, it's just an interesting, nice twist on what there is. So 7.5 for me. For me, it's also a 7.5. I think that this blends the ideas of an open draft, which is tends to be like stuff out on the table. Everyone at one at a time takes from it with what you also call a closed draft, which is like the, the cards being passed around. It mixes those two and it leads to some funky moments like what we're talking about with the, oh, I shouldn't have known that you... You're leaving that for me. But at the same time, the the sacrifice of that, like perfect smoothness, also means it's an incredibly punchy and fast game. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the awkwardness around the edges <clears throat> gives it its charm to me. And mm -hmm. it's one that I, I look forward to. I think it's a little weaker at two players because you don't see as much stuff. Interesting. At three and higher, you're going to have more opportunities to see different dice numbers and different animals more likely come through. At two players, I was like, well, there's no way that I'm getting more than like 12 different animals because there's only 12 <laughs> that have come out. So I think it's a, a little weaker on the lower side, but plays uh, higher well because of just that simultaneous nature. I like it. I have fun with it. I think there's other games that are more broad appeal, but this one has some specific appeal for me. So 7.5 recommending it. There you go. So that's our thoughts on Spectacular. Uh, if you've played it, let us know how you think. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Chris Yee. Have fun playing games. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this review or whatever you just watched, wasn't it amazing? Uh, check out our channel, Dice Tower. Uh, we have all kinds of things. We review games. We do top tens. We play games live. It's all about board games, but especially the people who play them. Check out the Dice Tower YouTube channel.